Seven years after anti-Obamacare town halls took aim at Democratic members, Republicans are now getting an earful from frustrated constituents, voicing concerns over everything from government inaction to executive orders to now, ironically, the repeal of Obamacare is the source of these raucous town halls. This video comes in from an event in Utah where House Oversight Chair Jason Chaffetz went to speak to what he thought was going to be a friendly group of local voters. Joining me now, Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist, and Kevin Chavis is former D.C. Democratic councilman. Welcome uh, to both of you. Good to have you here. Um, you. Molly, let me start with you. Um, boy, uh, payback uh, appears to be what's happening to Jason Chaffetz and others out there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that's true. It's always a good idea to pay attention to large protest movements, but this has a feel of something else entirely. I mean, Jason Chaffetz won re-election with 73.5 percent of the vote. Some of the people interviewed that were at this were not local constituents. They came in from Scottsdale, Arizona, driving over 600 miles to protest him. So this is uh, this is something altogether different. It has a bit of a feel of grassroots um, of AstroTurf and t instead of grassroots activism. And it, you know, it's, it's definitely something real that's happening. There's a lot of outrage on the left, but this is a little bit too incoherent to be compared to a I Tea gotcha. Party protest. It's just staying with you for a second, Molly. It is, are, they, are they all Democrats and liberals, or are some of these people never Trumpers? Because we saw what happened in U Utah during the presidential election, um, and perhaps some of them weren't happy with him for, you know, sort of the flip-flop uh, on, on President Trump. Right. Well, th another place where there was a protest was Tennessee, where Diane Black was had her town right. hall protested. And that's a state that went overwhelmingly for Trump. Whereas with Utah, even though he beat Hillary Clinton by 20 some or almost 20 points, uh, there was a large anti-Trump vote in Utah. Still, this does not strike me as the kind of principled opposition to Trump that you saw, even though there will be a call for Jason Chaffetz in his role as oversight chairman. To, be, do, to do a good job in holding the Trump administration gotcha. accountable. Kevin, what do you think of these protests? Well, look, uh, feelings are raw. And protest politics is a direct result of people feeling disenfranchised or upset or disappointed. Uh, but I think we've got to find a way to appear to our higher angels. We've got a lot of work to do in this country. And I think that, frankly, the onus is on, on the president and his team to be uniters as opposed to dividers. And I think that, you know, through some of the cabinet picks, there's an opportunity to rise above all of this. Wow, what a and novel I think concept. to demonstrate. Yeah, I mean, I th <laughs> but I think that's important. I think, yeah. that, look, there are going to be people who are going to want to fight no matter what. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do in this country, and there's ways to bring ourselves, uh, uh, all of us together. And I think the president can do that. Yeah, um, very important point. Um, I want to show everybody the video of Betsy DeVos as she committed the cardinal sin today of trying to go visit a school, a public school in Washington, D.C., in her new role as, as Secretary of Education, uh, she was blocked at the door by protesters and had to turn around and leave Molly. Sad situation, to be sure. Well, this is another situation where people are really not thinking through how their protest appears to many people. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the first time Democrats have blocked doors to a public school, and it won't be the last. But it's exactly the kind of thing that people don't like seeing. And it's almost a metaphor for the for the situation with teachers unions. You know, supporters of teachers unions don't want to let people into the schools who want to change the system or improve yeah. educational outcomes for poor students whose parents can't just afford to get them sent to an expensive private yeah. school. That's a great point. And I always point out in these protests, it's not the parents who are out there blocking, believe me. Uh, they would probably like for her to come in, and a lot of them want their kids to have the advantages and alternatives that, that uh, she's talking about in many cases. Kevin, what do you make of it? Well, look, Democrats aren't the only ones that block doors. George Wallace famously blocked some doors in Alabama we talk about. Uh, but I tell you this. I'm disappointed that the protesters are doing this to Secretary DeVos. Uh, this is an opportunity to channel that outrage toward what really needs to be focused on in education. Every 42 seconds, a kid drops out of school in America. 60% of our graduates are neither college nor career ready. There should be a sense of outrage about the educational outputs in America. And I think Secretary DeVos can help cure that. But people need to focus on the real deal. We are not educating our most precious resource source, and that's America's children. All right. You both Make great points. Thank you so much for being here today. Kevin and Molly, great to see you.